Let's create a QRadar Manage Host in Azure. So I'm logging into the Azure portal. I go to Marketplace, Azure Marketplace, and I'm going to click uh, here, search for QRadar. Hit enter. take it so, and uh, I click here on the curator and you have when you click get get it now you have two options the curator console or a manage host which is what we're going to select here we click continue and we need to pass the parameters for the creation of the manage host here it describes all the different manage host uh, I'm sure you are familiar with this. If not, there is a short video I did a while back on curator architecture. Now, uh, you can create a resource group. And that's a way that uh, Azure group things. The virtual machine name has to be unique. Can I put that? Region, I'm taking the default is nothing on the availability option. That's the managed host that we are creating. I'm not changing the virtual CPUs or nor the memory. Uh, you can do so, and actually the if you put more power here the process will be even shorter. Authentication type, I'm going to put my username and I need to remember this when I will be SSHing into the box. Uh, it's case sensitive normally. Don't use passwords and I use SSA key and I uh, created a short video that shows how you generate public private keys using PuTTY on a Windows system and how you actually uh, well, I'm going to show you here how you use PuTTY later to SSH into the box. So I created that uh, public key back then on that video. And one important thing, uh, I saved the file, the public, the public key here, and you can edit this with Notepad, but resist the temptation of doing the copy uh, from Notepad, because when you do it from here, there are some comments that are going to confuse the, the whole thing. So what you want to do instead is you want to copy it from here, from the uh, PuTTY key generator. You, if you close it, you can just load it and point to the actual uh, keys that you that you have. So I'm, I'm selecting all and doing copy, so I have it on my clipboard. And that's what I'm going to be providing in here for authentication. So when I'm doing the SSH, I need to prove that I have the private key that matches this public key. Next, uh, ask me for the disk. I'm taking the one, the default one terabyte. Now networking. This is important. Now, in the public IP, the default is a dynamic IP, and Curator and the managed host do not like that. So select here static, because you don't want that IP to uh, ever change. Also, in the networking security group, this is basically the firewall rules. And I'm clicking here, notice that is any any. So anyone on SSH can actually come to this particular machine. You don't want that in a production system, for sure. So specify the CDAT range, uh, for example, if this is going to be a managed host, you need to put here the IP address of the curator console and any other machine that you want to log in and, and, and work with this particular machine. So I'm going to leave this in any any. And uh, nothing else to do here. I click management take all the defaults here, I take the default on the guest config, take the default on the tags, 
and this is going to review and validate my parameters, make sure nothing is missing, and validation completed, and you click create, and this is going to start the process of instantiating this manager. We haven't told the machine what type of manage host we're going to be creating. This is a generic one. It can be anything. And uh, in the documentation, if you actually Google configuring curator appliance Azure, you, f you get to this page. And notice that in here it tells us that we need to run this command sudo root first run first with a number here which correspond to the specific manage host that we want to deploy. So this is uh, creating the machine. Uh, this takes, you know, somewhere with that number of CPUs and RAM takes, it can take uh, eight, nine minutes. So I'm going to pause the video until this part finishes. So it took a little bit more than eight minutes. Let's actually go to the Windows machine that we're going to be SSHing in two. So this is the machine I used before to generate the public-private key pair. And again, the link is in the video description. So I'm going to use putty. I'm going to specify the IP address of the machine. We go back here. If we actually... is a unique manage 2345 and we get the IP address this one here, the one that ends in 254 so we have to copy it and we are gonna paste it in here that's where we are gonna be SSHing into the 254 address yeah, that one I'm gonna use SSH on port 22 we need to go under SSH, under Auth, we need to load the private key. So we can, so the, pro the protocol can prove that I possess the private key that matches the public key I used when I created the virtual machine. So I load it from here and I can either click open from here or go back to the session and click open and this key is not uh, in the host file, so it's not uh, that host, the IP address is not the host file, but if you click here, yes, it's going to be added. It says login as, and you put uh, the user ID that you used when you created the machine. Hit enter, and bang, we are in it. Again, we use the SSH key pair to log in. Now we need to tell uh, what type of managed host do we want? So we're going to run this command and let's say that we're going to use a data gateway. So I'm going to... do I have paste here? Yep. And then put 7000 and that's going to initiate the process of creating a data gateway. So let's say that we're putting a data gateway in Azure because we're going to be sending uh, uh, logs and flows and all that good stuff into a curator instance that is in QRock. So we are deploying a data gateway, the same thing that people do on-prem. You can actually do it on the cloud as well. So that, that was quick, it did it. What password do I want to put? Retype the password. And voila, that concludes the video.